Hello, today I got some exciting stuff. I got some massive tapes to play with and I'm going to show you the results. The other day there was a knock on the door and look what I got handed. Nice little parcel. Wasn't totally sure what I was going to find in it, so let's have a look. It's quite heavy and it's quite wide, but it's not huge. But I've an idea what's in there. Let's have a look. Ooh. Uh, that's rather nice. That is rather nice. It's a Bassif Chrome Maxima 2 100. Let's see if there's anything else in there. And yeah, oh, I'm sure there's something there somewhere. Here we go. Ooh. That one is a Chrome Super 2. Let's see what else we can find. If there's anything else in there. Must be. And this is like, this is like a magic trick, pulling rabbits out of the hat. And the latest rabbit is... It's in there somewhere. I know it's in there somewhere. And voila. Now this one looks a bit special. Passive reference to master. Mind you, they all look rather nice. So we'll have to see what they're, what they're good at and what they're not. There's a few more in the parcel, but I think we'll just, well, we're not going to do all three, just going to do the one today. And let's see, it's behind the round window. No, we'll go for this one. The Bassif Super 2, Chrome Super 2, 90. It's already been unwrapped, so that's the easiest one to start with. It's a rather nice case. It's actually, the um, plastic it's made of is quite rigid. And there's the specifications, which all seems reasonably good. And uh, it says it's to, it's to IEC and it's got high bias and all that sort of thing. Anyway, as you can see, it's rigidly made, very smart. You're not going to, it's not slippery, it's got, it's got ridges in it. And uh, let's have a, have, a, have a look inside. Well, I think it looks rather neat. It does actually look, and I can tell you, it feels, look at the colour of that tape. It looks and feels quality, and it smells of wax crayon. And that's side A, so that's all right. There is no flex in that case, even though it's a composite with the clear bit. And let's have a look at this side. And let's make sure there's no slack. Look at that, and it's got five screws, brass coloured screws, or golden coloured screws, I don't know what they're actually made of, I'm not going to unscrew it. So have a quick look in here, oh some rather nice stickers, and let's have a look at this J card, nice and tight, and uh, yeah, simple, nothing complicated about that at all, it's just very functional very smart there's nothing more you can say than that really very functional and very smart right, okay so let's see if there's anything special on it inside well you can mark it up for mono stereo date etc so it's got one of the slightly better J cards anyway let's put it back together now it's really that really is a picture anyway Let's reassemble it and we can carry on from there. I'll do the normal tests and we'll do the normal oscillograms and I've got a treat at the end for you. Anyway, if you find any value in this this video, maybe you'd like to do something simple like bop the like button and bop the subscribe button and uh, we can go along and get some added enjoyment out of this video try to get some more people involved right okay that's it that's the smashing picture there so this is the trace this is the playback trace and look at the buff ding on there absolutely smashing as you can hear it sounds very nice something noticeable on this trace is that the two channels are almost identical they're not exactly the same, but they're pretty damn close. Oh, I've seen a lot worse.
going to do my DJ bit now and introduce myself, introducing the tune. Where We Want to Go by Patrick Patrickos, Dynamic and Clean. Okay, Pop Pickers, we're going to do that again now at minus 20 dB, just so that we can see how good it could be. Where We Want to Go by Patrick Patrickos, Dynamic and Clean. Well, I think they sounded pretty good, but you may have just noticed a slight bit of print through at the very end. So, on to the interesting bits now. We'll have a look at some charts. Oh, God, charts. Yes, these are quite interesting charts. Keep them simple, keep them short. Looking at the white noise one here for 0 dB, and you can see it's a very slight slope all the way down. It's not the normal shape. And looking at the 20 dB one, the minus 20 dB one, you can see here that is more of a normal shape, uh, a little bit furrier than the 0 dB one, but a more normal shape. The pink noise one here at 0 dB is a bit closer to the normal shape, but you can see there that it's still got that slope on it. It's, it's, it's showing the same characteristics as the white noise. And the minus 20 dB pink noise is almost identical to the 0 dB pink noise. Just got that little upturn at the very end there. So now we've got to the exciting bit. We've got to the freeze response for the two levels, 0 dB and then minus 20 dB. Let's see what, they've, what they show us, what they mean. Looking at these freeze response charts, you can see that the 0 dB one is reasonable and the minus 20 dB one is actually better, which is slightly amazing. It's got a less of a drop off and a bigger signal to noise ratio relatively than the 0 dB one. So it's quite interesting that. It appears the low frequency response on this machine and with this tape is excellent, but it's actually got a slightly high boost compared to the rest of the frequencies. This is not the same shape that we saw on, for instance, the TDK CD2. So now when you look at the minus 20 dB frequency sweep, you can see that it uh, hangs in there a little bit longer. It's got a little bit more relative signal to noise ratio improvement, and but it's still got that fairly good low response or slightly accentuated low response whichever way you look at it and now for the second most important part of this sort of thing the silence if you look at this you can see that the majority of the hiss is going to be stopped at minus 83 db minus 83 db so that's pretty damn good that's fair that's very quiet and just to remind you this was done on a W1200, which is a fixed bias, modern cassette deck. So this is the results you can expect to get out of a modern Japanese stroke Chinese cassette deck that's been set up properly. Now looking again at these tracks of these tones, you can see there's a track at the end there. That peak on that thing there is plus 3 dB, but the tape deck can't actually drive it to plus 3 dB. So you get a very soft sort of compression effect which doesn't sound bad, and that's why I haven't bothered including distortion figures on this one, because there's hardly any, even when you're driven to the full limit, it doesn't actually produce the distortion figures. If you've got any value out of this video, you might like to hit the subscribe or the like button, or, or share it around and let people know, and just generally make the channel grow. I promised you a treat at the beginning of this video, and I didn't lie to you, it's coming up now. I've recorded from the YouTube library the Toccata in D from Bach, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Got some pictures for you to watch, but he's not actually playing this one.